Welcome everyone to video number two of the three-part series on respect and recognizing disrespect in a relationship. This is the second in a three-part series we'll be addressing disrespectful behaviors numbers 8 through 15. These are behaviors that have come up time and time again over the 30 years that I've been doing relationship advice. So this covers both the written columns that I used to publish on AskHartBeat.com and SurvivingDating.com, plus the ones I did on Blog Talk, plus what I'm now doing on YouTube. So there's a lot of letters that have come in and conversations I've had that indicate that these kind of behaviors that we're setting out here, I'm limited to 21, are extremely common. It's unfortunate that so many young women have to go through this drag and drama. Another reminder I want to make sure you understand is that even though these are assigned numbers, these numbers do not indicate a frequency or an order of importance. They are merely the order that I thought of them and wrote them down in, okay? So it's no, nothing more important to it than that. They also may apply not only to men in romantic relationships, and I say that because the majority of the viewers on this channel are heterosexual females, but these behaviors can also reflect disrespect that you may be experiencing in uh, relationships with coworkers, same-sex or opposite-sex friendships, your siblings or other family members, sorority sisters, church members, classmates, neighbors, pretty much any kind of relationship that you have with some other person. Your comments are welcome, and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button right now before you move on to the rest of the show to show me your appreciation for the hard work that goes into making all these videos for you. Before we get started, let's, restart, let's begin by recapping the disrespectful behaviors, words, and attitudes that I shared with you in the first video. If you haven't listened to that one yet, look up in the upper right-hand corner. You can pause the video and click the link that I'm going to put there so you can listen to that one first and then come back here. But they basically covered, they covered seven points. These are the points. Inconsistency and unreliability. That's where the shit that they say and the shit that they do don't be matching up. Number two, you get put down and, and nagged a lot. Number three... They waste your time. They keep you waiting on them for late for dates, late for phone calls, or they cancel at the last minute, that kind of thing. Number four, you catch them in lies. Number five, they interrupt or talk over you all the time because, after all, what you got to say is really not that important compared to what he has to say. Number six, he doesn't make time for you or keeps you begging for his attention. And then the final one in the first video is that he makes too much time for you. So it's like he don't have nothing going on and he's in your face all the time. You can't even breathe. Now let's move on to slide number eight. This is what I call the Humpty Dumpty Man. I don't know if you remember that rhyme as a kid. It was Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. What does that mean for you? It means that you're dealing with some man who is broken, he's depressed, he's in pieces. Most of these dudes can't hold a job. They just job hop if they work at all. They are struggling with various addictions and dependencies. He may have a history of being in and out of prison. You know, he's a holic. <laughs> he's always talking about the kind of help he needs from you or some other person. He will put you in a position of supporting him if you aren't careful. Claim that he can't do housework. He can't get it together. And basically what it is is he just can't be of any help to you because he's, he's like a kid in a grown-up body. Like Humpty Dumpty, he is so damaged to the point that he's in pieces. He can't offer you a healthy, mutually rewarding relationship because he has too many mental, emotional, financial, physical health, or psychological problems. That's what broken people are. they just in pieces. There's not enough love in this world, girlfriend, to fix him. Y'all be thinking that you could swoop in there like you got an S on your chest and a cape and something like you could fix everybody. Over and over again, young, vibrant women become raccoon-eyed, nervous wrecks. You know what I'm talking about? 
and you know, hair falling out, skin all jacked up. They lose weight. They look a hot mess because you are giving to something that is not giving to himself. You're trying to take care of a grown man who's sucking the life out of you like a vampire. Girlfriend, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Focus on that line. Why do you think that you have some kind of magical superpowers and you could do something that a whole army couldn't do? Humiliation and contempt are awful. These are guys that will try to humiliate you by sharing the things that you told them in confidence, by really, you know, by digging on your insecurities and telling other people what they are. And he'll do this. In a, usually they like to do it in front of a crowd of people because they want to get like, I don't know, some kind of acknowledgement, like they're just this, this wonderful person for being with a person who has these, these many issues. I'm not really sure what's going on there. I've never really talked to any of them about why they choose to do this. But, you know, it starts with the contemptuous behavior because what they're trying to do is position themselves to show where they're better than you, like you should be happy that they're with you. And they'll start to demand stuff like they want to know everything about you, right? They want to know all your traumas and all your pain and everything that hurts you, any dysfunctional issues with your family, any assaults or child abuse that you've suffered, any addictions that you've, you've dealt with. They want to know everything that makes you afraid, and they want to know your dreams. They want to know every weakness. They want to know every insecurity that you have. Then that's when they turn around and humiliate you by using that. You think you're telling them something because, you know, he's your man and it's going to make you closer. Keep your mouth shut. There's videos on this channel talking about how women share too much of their business with men. I mean, sometimes even husbands are kind of shaky, but at least he's more, more committed. But, you know, you have to vet them properly during the dating phase. This kind of stuff here, where you find that he said stuff about you to his friends or family or stuff, that lets you know right there, this is not somebody you should tr ever trust with anything that's really important and that could really, really hurt you, and that really should be told only to a paid psychotherapist. I usually will do what I do to test them. I tell them some BS or some, you know, little nothing I made up or maybe something I pulled out of my advice column. And I pretend like it happened to me. It's a test. I want to see what they're going to do with that information. And if I hear it and it comes back or it's thrown up in my face in an argument or a discussion, and, hey, that's why you this and that because blah, 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 blah happened to you. I know right then and there, A, that he can't be trusted, and B, he's got to go. He got to go. I don't, you know, but at least I didn't tell him anything that's really going to hurt me, you know, because you got a man who's going to turn around and use your vulnerabilities and your hurts and your weaknesses against you to win an argument or to get some kind of cred amongst his friends or something with these little snarky remarks, that's somebody, that's a clown. you got to get rid of him because ain't nobody trying to be in a circus. Slide number 10. These are the dudes that shut you down and don't, I mean, there can be no important conversations or communication with him. You really just never feel heard. I mean, he may tell you in words or or in actions to shut up, to stop talking, that what you said or what you think is stupid, that you too emotional, you too illogical. Okay, that's words. And then by behavior, he's going to act in a way that demonstrates those, those words to you. But in behavior, he's going to stonewall you with silence. You ask a question, he acts like he never even heard you. And you keep asking and he keeps looking at you like, you know, he's just not going to answer. Sometimes they'll walk off, they'll drive off, they'll kick you out their car and drive off. I have to admit, I've been guilty of that myself. Sometimes, you know, you're talking to them and they hang up in your face. Or, you know, you're, you're texting him or trying to call him. And he just, like, you're going in a text and then he just shuts down. He stops texting you back. Or you leave him message after message. He never calls you back. Basically, he is shutting down all communication because whatever the issue is that you're trying to talk to him about, or resolve the problem you're trying to resolve, he's not trying to be bothered with it. And that's his way of telling you that. Like I said, some of them will be very, you know, upfront about it and just tell you straight to your face, shut up, I'm not trying to hear that. But most of them will behave in a way that communicates that message. Some of them are so bold that they're going to laugh at you right in your face. When they see you mad and upset or something hurt, crying, all that stuff, they laugh, they start laughing. 
which basically shuts you down in a different way, right? Because you don't want to be embarrassed and humiliated for your tears. Basically, this kind of behavior is severely damaging to you and the relationship. You cannot have a relationship where you two work together as a team if you cannot negotiate and compromise and work out resolutions and, and soothe over conflicts. But someone shutting down communication with you completely, it, it, there's just no hope. There's no hope you, for a healthy kind of relationship. It's just, it's, it, you can't do it with someone who won't even talk to you. Okay, this is a big one that's been appearing a lot in the advice column. But it's something that you probably won't really have to deal with if you're the kind of lady that, I mean, you won't deal with it right away, let me put it that way. If you are the kind of woman that wants to wait, you know, before you uh, get jiggy with a new guy, you want to you know, see what he's working with, what he's talking about, and if that's something that you should even do. But some of you are very quick to think that by doing that, it's going to solidify the relationship or something. I'm not really sure why you want to put yourself at all that emotional, physical, and mental risk just for some clown you just met, but, you know, that's your choice. You grow, you do what you want to do. But, okay, so just say you, you know, you did wait, and this is something that you guys just really didn't talk about or you weren't expecting. So here you are in the mix, and you find out that his interests go in a way different direction than you want to follow. I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of specifics, but the key issue is that he requests or does something why y'all are horizontal, and you say no or stop, I don't like that. And his reaction is the one, is the telling part. You know, a guy who's cool say, okay, babe, you know, I didn't know. We should have talked about it, I guess. You know, I, I'm cool. Let's, you know, let's just, let's, we just gonna, not going to be bothered with that. And what do you like? Okay, that would be a, a, a solid uh, conversation that would develop intimacy and move y'all forward in a relationship, right? But instead, this kind of dude, he's going to pout. He's going to get mad. He's going to jump up and say that, you know, you why not? And all this kind of stuff. He's going to try to, you know, argue you down about your boundaries of no and stop. Some of them will, I mean, they're going to keep asking you, right? They're going to keep asking you. They might ask you, you know, why not? Well, what's wrong with this? And, you know, why not? You just say that because you haven't tried it. Who hurt you? I mean, they're going to do all kind of stuff, fire all kind of stuff at you to try to get you to change your mind. That's to give him what he wants. Now, you know you're not comfortable with it. You find it demeaning. It's repulsive. Sometimes it's even painful. You don't want to do it, but he refuses to accept no for an answer. So they keep at you. You know, they're going to whine. They're going to beg. They're going to try to manipulate you into it by waiting to tell you, you know, y'all horizontal again and then try to force the issue to make you say no and stop again. And they keep doing that. It's like they're just not respecting your no. Sometimes they really pull out the big guns and they try to coerce you with threats of, you know, abandoning, your, abandoning you or the relationship or they just force it on you anyway. When I mean, you may have consented to something, I mean, I'm not saying you not you, you know, in bed with him against your will, so you evidently consented to something, but you didn't consent to that. But he takes it there anyway, in spite of the fact that you told him you weren't interested in it. The, the dudes that do that, they operate with the mentality that it's better to ask for forgiveness for, than for ask for permission because they see you're not going to get permission, so they figure they can just do it and then, you know, beg and plead, oh, babe, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, you know, and that you'll forgive them. Watch for that because that's a big-time game. Some of them will jump up and accuse you of cheating on them or being frigid or inflexible and unwilling to satisfy her man or old-timey and all kind of stuff, anything they can to try to put you down and coerce you into giving him what he wants. He'll talk, some of them pull out that, you know, well, never wonder you single. Uh, that's why your ex cheated on you or left you. But see, that's your fault because you shouldn't have told him. You shouldn't have told him. Just say we broke up, it didn't work out. That's it. That's all they need to know. You start giving them all kind of details, well, then he's going to use it against you, trust. When it's time for him to get something out of you, he's going to throw it up in your face. Anything to coerce you into giving him what he wants will be used, okay? Often they will threaten women. These are women that they allegedly love now, keep that in mind, by saying, well, if you don't, some other woman will. I need a freak, you know, stuff like that. So you're sitting there trying to figure out what to say back with him, what you really should be saying, get out. 
Get out. Just hit the door and don't come back. That's what you should be saying. Have you ever been with a man that you noticed seemed to go out of his way to make you jealous or feel insecure? There's a lot of them around. They stare at other women. Okay, I mean, everybody's going to look, you know what I mean? But the ones that stare like they ain't never seen a woman walking before, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's so rude and dismissive and just nasty. Okay, they just look like a just a thirsty fool. Or some of them will just, you know, openly flirt with other women. Some of them will bring up other women to you. I think the runner-up in worst behavior, I'll tell you the winner in a minute, the runner-up in the worst behavior is those dudes that will compare you to other women. They tell you that, you know, what you should dress like or you should get your boobs done like her, you should cut your hair like her, you should cook like or screw like her. Some Whatever some other woman does, You know, he's comparing you to her, and the other person does it better. They look better. They are better than you. They love to bring up their exes and reminisce about the great way that she satisfy him that you don't. Yeah. Take your butt on back over there then. This is so wonderful. Some will talk about women that they work with or their buddies' wives or girlfriends in a way that makes you come out on the short end of the stick. Now, you know them women ain't going to give his behind the time of day. And if he did, if they he even tried it, his friends or coworkers or whatever would, like, come down on him like, I don't even know, like 40 days and 40 nights of rain. It will be awful. He knows that, so he's not doing it. That's not, he's not going to actually do it. But what he's doing is saying something that he going, knows is designed to hurt you. Now, why would you want to be with a man who's, who draws out of the way to hurt you? I'm not sure. But a lot of women deal with it. Now, let's talk about the winner of this, the, what I call the winner of the trash trophy. This is the dude who will flat out cheat on you after he goes through the hard way of solidifying you two as a committed couple. You know, either you sat down and you talked about it, you got engaged, sometimes you even married. And, uh, you know, he just he just goes out and cheats anyway. Of course you're devastated. That was the point. So what is the goal here? You know, because everybody does something. Everything that we do, we do it for a reason. Don't ever think that it was an accident. He ain't those walking down the street actually slipped and tripped and fell into somebody's cooch. Okay? This was planned. This was intentional. He did this knowing it would hurt you, knowing it would damage your marriage, knowing it would damage your relationship, knowing it would hurt your kids. He didn't care. All he cared about at that moment was himself. All he cared about if it's a long-term situation, all he cared about all those times was himself. So you have a problem there. You have a very serious problem. So what is it? Let's say you're just dating him, though. Let's circle back to that. Just say you're dating him. What is the goal when he starts talking about other women? I see it as they're trying to set up some kind of competition. Um, it's often called triangulation when you start talking about narcissists. But basically what they want you to do is jump through hoops to please his raggedy ass in some kind of imaginary competition that he created to boost his weak ego and make his weak, low self-esteem have him but feel better. That's what he's doing. He wants you to feel lower than he does. That's the whole purpose of this of this situation in all of these games. These dudes who think, they don't think anything of damaging your confidence by using your fears and insecurities against you are the absolute worst form of humanity. You can never feel safe or secure with these dudes. You find yourself walking on eggshells, full of anxiety, you ain't sleeping, you're you know, grinding your teeth, getting rashes and stuff, having needing uh, to take antidepressants, all kind of stuff women go through uh, when they're in a relationship like this where the guy's just hammering them and their insecurities and just focusing on their fears and throwing them up in her face. The best, I mean, the best way to handle this kind of dude the sorry excuse of a human being is to get rid of them. Now, some of you, you know, going to take you a minute to get to that point, but you will get there eventually when you get tired of feeling bad. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'll make that move. On this slide, we're talking about subjugation and submission. Because in his eyes, you are just a mere woman, a.k.a. a peasant minion, there to do his bidding. He is the big king ruler of all the lands that you can see. 
that's what he is in his mind. So he don't have no, no lands. He don't have no palace. He don't have no riches. He don't have no kingdom, but he's a king. I'm like, okay, you just live that dream, my brother. Now, these are the kind of dudes you see online, right? They're going to rail on and on about how much they hate feminism, how feminism has ruined the world and caused global warming and the extension of whole species of animals. He's going to lament the days when women were raised to be wise and knew how to submit. He talks about women being at home, basically barefoot and pregnant, cleaning and cooking, and that's how they should have dinner on the table at 6 o'clock every night when he comes home from his minimum wage job. They expect to get their plate before growing children get fed. He's very stringent about what a woman's work is and how he's not going to do it, like washing laundry or dishes, changing diapers or cleaning the bathroom. That's, you know, vacuuming. That's all beneath him. That's woman's work, and he shan't be caught dead doing that. These dudes also have a tendency to make important decisions without you or your input. So they will get you both into, you know, as a married couple, they'll get you both into debt, right? Because you you on the hook for them, think them, the credit he gets too while you're married. So he, you know, I knew a woman who they were saving to buy a house, right? Her husband went into the, the account and she didn't have it set up so that they both had to sign. That was her mistake. I pointed it out to her later. He gets out $10,000 and goes and buys some rims. You know them kind that spend? This was some years ago. Them kind that spend that were real popular at the time. So you driving forward and the rims are spinning in the opposite direction or whatever. He bought a set of those for his car. And with tax and installation everything, it was ten, more than $10,000. That's what he did with the money they were saving to buy a house. She was livid. Another way that they do uh, in this kind of thing is, uh, I lost my train of thought, got it. Well, anyway, basically, you know, he sees himself as the ruler of the roots. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Okay, this guy I was talking to, quote, talking to, I didn't actually, you know, we weren't like a couple or nothing like that. And I knew we weren't going to be because in the con one of the conversations we had, he expressed his belief that he should be the chief decision maker. And I'm like, why do you think that? You know, I just wanted to know. I was, it was a conversation, you know what I mean? It was a conversation. So I'm like, well, well what makes you think that that's a good idea? that you should make all the big decisions by yourself. And he says, well, because he's a man. I said, oh. I said, okay, well, what falls under the, the umbrella of big decisions that you would be making by yourself? You know, I don't want to assume anything. I, I, I want to do an interview. I want to find out all the facts. So he tells me, like, you know, what house we would buy and where we would live and, you know, like what neighborhood and all that. I said, okay, so what would you be considering as you made that decision. And he says, well, you know, how much it costs. I said, I see. So no consideration for the fact that you might have a growing family and need certain space, that this neighbor, since you travel for work, that your wife and kids are in a safe neighborhood, that there are schools close by, stores close by, shopping close by, doctors close by, hospitals close by, fire department close by. You wouldn't be thinking about any of that, huh? And he just sat there dumbfounded. I'm like, yes, yeah, see, this is why men should never make decisions by themselves because y'all don't think about the big picture. You only think about what you want. So anyway, I shared that story with you just as to give you an example of the kind of thinking that I'm talking about. He also believed in that, you know, feminism stuff. He was against feminism. So you know that did not last. That little situation did not last. And point number 14 a frequent way that men disrespect women or people disrespect you, period, is by violating your personal space and freedom. These are men that are controlling, possessive. They will, they will they, some of them call themselves territorial, trying to downplay the fact that they are jealous freaks. And then these kind of people also will resort to stalking behaviors if you leave them because they, you know, they don't want you to go. They're not ready for you to leave, so they will stalk you to terrorize you or hopefully to try to make you come back. They may tell you early on that you can never leave him. That is a super red flag. I mean, that's the biggest red flag I could imagine. That red flag is about a mile in length, okay? Pay attention. These are the dudes that, you know, they're not going to let you go. You can't leave me, this kind of stuff. They're basically telling you right off the bat. That, you know, where their mind is. I had a boyfriend like that when I first, first year of college. 
And he said that to me. I went home and told my daddy. I told my daddy. And my daddy called him up and told him all this he better not do and how he better not see him around our neighborhood. Because my father carried guns. You know, he was playing that about his daughter. And uh, then my, uh, my oldest brother was, you know, Thug Jr. So I'm like, okay. So he, the boy was smart enough to see that his little threat wasn't going to work. It might get him six feet under. So he did not uh, pursue that line of, of behavior. But he did say it to me. You know, so the way that they try to control you like that, they, you'll feel like a dog in a choke, choke chain. You know, you can only go so far before they yank you back for your misdeeds and your unapproved behavior. They want to know where you are every second. It doesn't, you know, it's not like he just doesn't like you spending time with anybody else. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be family. It could be your kids. And it could be his kids. They don't care. They just want you to be, you know, they want to control what you do and where you do it. These are the kind of dudes that will try to isolate you from your circle of influence. So he's the only one that's influencing you, the only one whose thoughts and opinions that you are listening to. Some of them feel threatened by your friends and coworkers, especially if they're male. You know, they demand to check your phone, your emails, your texts. They'll listen in on your calls. They don't want you to put it on speaker so they can hear. Who, it asks you stuff like, who is that and where are you going and why are you wearing that and all this kind of stuff. You know, it's just, ugh, it's just horrible. The, the hoops that the women jump through to try to appease these knuckleheads instead of just getting rid of them. You start to feel like property. You know, you feel like you can't breathe, like you're in a bird cage, when that's the only place where he's happy if you are in a cage. Usually that cage is the house. And, you know, if he does this enough or over a long enough period of time or with enough threatening power, you know, some of them wave around weapons and all kind of stuff, right, hit walls and stuff that really scare you, you may be afraid of him you, so you to the point where you're afraid to leave them, so you stay just because you're afraid. There's uh, ways around that. I mean, if you really get in that kind of situation, you need to call the police and they'll refer you to, um, you know, battered women's organizations and domestic violence type organizations for help. Don't stay in a situation where you feel unsafe or afraid to leave. That's the worst for you emotionally and mentally. And point number 15, we're going to talk about how the people that love and care about you are confused. they confused about what you see in this person. And they sitting up there like, you know, looking all confused and, and questioning and like, uh, where did you meet him? Uh, okay, so why do you like him? Well, what, what, what attracted you to him? They're going to ask you stuff like that, right, if they're trying to be polite. But your friends are going to be like, girl, what's wrong with you? And if you have male relatives, you know, they tend to be a little bit more um, cagey, they'll, I don't know, they're going to express their concerns about, you know, dude's character, you know, his family, his friends, his the energy or vibe he gives off, you know, something about his background, something. They're going to have something to say and ask you about. But generally, they have a negative view of him. They get this negative vibe. Dudes will say stuff like, well, you know, I don't know, he don't seem that cool or something up with that dude. You know, they'll say stuff like that that's kind of vague because they don't really know them, so they really can't say too much. But dudes can feel other dudes, and they know if somebody, if he says, oh, he a good dude, you can bet that, you know, that's just the male stamp of approval. If they have any questions about his behavior, attitude, the way he talks, or they see the way he is, hovers around you, something, they're going to point it out, right? They're going to say, you know, uh, I don't know, I don't like that dude. I don't like that person at all. They'll let you know, and they'll be real blunt about it, too. You, on the other hand, okay, now this is what happens. So, so y'all get this criticism, these questions, these, you know, sideways, these side-eye looks from your family and your close friends, and then you start making excuses. You start defending him. You know, they say, saying, well, we think this and that, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, you say. You try to downplay it. You make excuses for his behavior. You make excuses for what he may have done at this you know, while he at the barbecue or something, you, some of you will even go so far as to intentionally downplay or flat out lie the things or lie to these people that care about you about this man because you don't want him to know that he spent 12 years in prison and is trying to get his life together. You don't know that he was in re drug rehab for six years off and on, off and on, battling his, you know, substance abuse problems. 
You don't want him to know that he got three baby mamas and four kids that he's trying to support on his minimum wage job. That's all he can get since he spent all them years behind bars. You don't want them to know the dirt. You come from a family of educators and dudes only got a GED. They'll know that, though, when they're in conversation. But you still try to down. But he's trying to make himself better. He signed up. He's going to start school in, in the fall. You're going to make some excuse to try to cover for him. Why are you doing that? You know, the bottom line is, you know, if these people knew the truth about this dude and demanded that you stop wasting your time with him, then you would be all in your feelings about it. But, you know, sometimes, honey, you need to listen to the people who have a track record of loving you and having your back because they're not trying to hurt you. They're trying to protect you. And some of you just don't seem to get that. You don't understand it. And you think, you just don't want me to be happy. And you just, you just, you just, you just, you too trolling. This, that. But they're trying to save you. They're trying to help you. And when they see a problem, they're trying to protect you from getting hurt or used, abused down the road. Please listen. The purpose of this channel as a whole is to teach you how to handle yourself, what to look for and the dangers and pitfalls that you may unknowingly find yourself in if you aren't educated on game. It's really highly risky to be single out here these days. If you don't know what is going on and you don't have a clue, you are just like got a target on your head. And I know that dating a new person is romantic and it's exciting and you be all full of hopes and dreams, but you got to be smarter about what you share which, you know, how you share your time, your energy, your love, and your body. You have to be smarter about that. Start paying more attention in the early days of your dating or any friendship. I mean, it doesn't have to be a man, any kind of friendship with any person that you're going to spend a lot of time with. You got to think about how they act and the things that they say, okay? Shit needs to be matching up. People don't change. They don't change, and I want to add a couple other things here, too. Um, they don't change, and that's one of the most important things that you as women need to accept. You need to watch, look, and listen more. Think about the stuff that they say and do, and, and, and be a little bit more analytical. Okay, Turn your emotions off a little bit more and use your brain. The general character of somebody will be demonstrated quickly. I mean, people can hide and pretend, you know, a little bit. But if you really pay attention, you will see cracks in the armor that they're putting up. Stuff, you know, you're going to raise your eyebrow. You're going to question something. You're going to give them the side eye. Those are your warnings. Pay attention to that. That's, it. that's, that's happening to save you, okay? And this is trying to set you up for some kind of struggle love. You need to say no to that. Say no to struggle love in any and all forms. And the most important takeaway from this video is that you need to start changing your screening criteria. You know, people look at, well, you know, what kind of job he got, what kind of money he got, what kind of car he gets. He's financially stable. Does he have good credit? What he looks like? How tall is he? I mean, that's, you know, great, too. And don't get me wrong. But you got to look at the man's behavior and the way he treats you. Or, you know, any person, like I said, we're not necessarily going to limit the disrespect to relationships. But since that's what we primarily cover on this channel, it makes sense to keep referring that as to that as the, the top focus for this video series. So I want you to start saying to yourself as you analyze people's behavior and the way they talk to you, if this person is not adding to my peace, they must be subtracted from my world. Adding to my piece, if not subtracted from my world. Okay, get it? You're not going to make no excuses. You're not going to stall. You're not going to negotiate. You're not going to have endless conversations about it, trying to get them to change or understand your point of view. They understood it the first time. All that other time you're talking about is just wasting your time and energy. You're not going to compromise. You're not going to do any kind of thing that gives them chance after chance after chance when they already showed you the number one type of fool that they are. Accept it person that showed you who they are and what their character is. Accept it. Stop trying to paint it with some other brush and shut one eye and look at it through your sunglasses and stuff like that. You dealing with a fool, okay? Accept that this person is raggedy. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. They need to give you peace or they need to get out. Now, before you get up out of here, please hit that like and the subscribe button. 
to become a participant in the channel. And if you want to know more about relationships from just about every angle, there's more than a thousand videos on this channel. You just go to the search bar at the top and type in the keywords that you're looking for, and you can pull up all the videos that will have that be addressing that atop that particular topic. Or you can look at the playlist. The videos are organized by topic. Of course, not everyone is in there. I tried to do do that, but ah, I admit that I fell through. Some fell through the cracks. But anyway, it doesn't matter. You know, you can find it with the search bar. Um, and I want to remind you, too, that we got one more video in this series coming up. So it will be, let me think, when I'll be able to do it? Probably next week, not the weekend, because it's, it's Easter and, you know, being with family and stuff. But um, I hope you guys enjoy your holiday weekend as well. And I'll see you with the third and final video on this series of Respect and recognizing when you are being disrespected. This is Deb Cooper from survivingdating.com. I'll see you real soon.